Welcome inside the WOSN studios. Great to be back for another season of Press Row. We've got the usual cast of characters joining us. Todd Walker to my left, Aaron Matthews over there in the middle, Mark Kuntz, of course, on the end. And guys, we made it. Week one is here. <laughs> Thank you for the bowl of green M&Ms to bring me back for another year. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you're in the green shirt, to match the M&Ms. You know it, brother. All right. Good to see you guys. Friday night, actually Thursday night, kicks off with yeah. Defiance Napoleon, but majority of the games coming on Friday, some on Saturday. What are we looking forward to week one? Which games are on our radar? Well, There's I'd a lot to choose from. I there think. There's a lot of great games. Uh, for me, uh, I think Lima Senior Middletown uh, is big just because I remember when that was such a big deal, and now they're, after four years away, uh, renewing their rivalry. And, of course, Lima Senior has uh, resurrected their football program the last couple of years with Mike Fell, and they'll have the spotlight all to themselves, so to speak, on a Saturday night. So I'm looking forward to that one among many, but... Now that one kind of stands out for me. I'm looking forward to listening to you call that <laughs> game on Saturday from the comfort uh, of my home or wherever I may be. Yeah, that'll be fun. And, you know, it, it always, every, anytime I think about Lima Senior Middletown, I remember the classic call of uh, William White busting off an 85 yard touchdown and William White trying to be caught by Chris Carter and he couldn't do it. So uh, that's a kind of history with this program, this uh, rivalry. So that one kind of sticks out for me, but there are a lot of highlights in week one. I mean, obviously the question with Lima Senior this year is are they going to be able to stop people defensively? Will mm -hmm. they be able to play for a full season the last couple of years? They've kind of teetered off towards the end of the year. Offensively, we know what they're going to bring with the, those talented wide receivers. Let's also not forget, you got year two of Darius Gordon as a quarterback. Last year was just his first year in the system. Now he's got another year under his belt. It's an offense that really is primed to be quite explosive, but will they be able to stop teams when it matters in the second half of the year? I, I think the, the game that I'm looking forward to the most is probably Marion Local and Macomb. Obviously, Marion Local, your four-time defending state champs. Macomb has been a traditional power up in the Blanchard Valley Conference. They've got a rich playoff history as well. With the Flyers going up to uh, Macomb, it's going to be an interesting matchup, I think. I'll tell you a matchup, if you're basing it solely on success of a year ago, would be Kenton and Coldwater. And watching those two, they get together every year, week one. They're teams that have won state championships in the same year. They're teams that, you know, play in the state semis, may advance, may not. But also, if you want to say uber close to Lima, the LCC Elida matchup, not just because it's the opener, you know, for me to call the birds game, but, you know, you've got two teams that are in two schools separated by 10 minutes, give or take. Kids know each other well. Two potentially high powered offenses, and two teams that, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, might be some question marks because of the systems that they're running and also some past, uh, you know, how things have gone in the past. I guess the word transgressions would be the good one. That game could be a 2017 game. It could be 58-55. I see your LCC Elida, and I'll raise you two schools even closer to each other. Columbus Grove and Pandora Gilboa, yes. both coming off playoff appearances last year. You look at the Grove Bulldogs, they lose Joey Warnicke from last year's team who did a lot, but they got a lot of kids coming back, and Pandora Gilboa always gives them a tough matchup. They do. You know, that LCC Elida game might not be as important as it could have been in past years had mm -hmm. they played, but I look forward to that and the other game that goes with it in the rotating mm -hmm. four between them and yeah. Bath and St. John's because yeah. I think that was just a really shrewd scheduling move those four schools made. I think it's outstanding that they got together. And it's good for LCC because they actually play somebody local, not from Indiana or from who knows where, but that schedule they're forced to go in now since the NWC gave them the boot a couple of years ago. I will say I am disappointed, though, that one of those games wasn't on Saturday. They, right. They're both yeah. on Friday as opposed to years past when they've split them so you could have a bigger gate for the two games. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was part of the uh, agreement in the beginning, but it I was. guess not. I don't, I don't know the reasoning behind whether, you know, why they're doing the two Fridays because the last two years – uh, since the inception of this game, it has been LCC Bath uh, at on Saturday night. Two mm -hmm. years ago, it was at um, at Bath. Last year, it was at the stadium. Now you've got this matchup on Friday. Hopefully, next year um, they can do one of those on Saturday, whether it be in Delphus or in Lima. You guys mentioned a couple of our broadcast games there. You'll be able to mm -hmm. see LCC Elida Friday 11 p.m. You'll be able to see Kenton Coldwater Friday 11 p.m. WOSN, WTLW for those two games, Marion Local Macomb on our family of networks, and then a couple other rivalry games. Salon Versailles, I think, is always a good one. That'll be good. You've got Ada USV, Lehman Fort Recovery. There's a full slate of week one games I'm really looking forward to taking in, and we'll have highlights, of course, on the Sports Report Friday, 10 p.m. In the meantime, though, there's eight new head coaches in the area. 
So what is the most intriguing storyline for a new head coach? I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to say Shawnee and John Carpenter. He brings sizzle. Yeah. That's for certain. He also brings big jewelry coming, you know, from Ohio State and having been a GA with, you know, with Brian Kelly at Notre Dame and, you know, the mindset, the mentality that he brings with him. Will that translate, you know, at the high school level where he does not have any coaching experience? And can that sizzle bring some steak? in well, the form of some wins. He's going to challenge kids, and yeah. I think that's something that Shawnee needs from time to time to Absolutely. have their kids challenged. I, I, I think it, it is a, a, a good question, is how well is that going to translate? I think that's an intriguing coaching change. I think you look down at Fort Lormy with Whit Parks taking over from Matt Bergbacher. Now, a veteran head coach was at Minster about 15 years ago, had a lot of success in the eastern part of the state at, at Zanesville, and now he, he's back, a, like I said, a veteran coach who was with the team last year as a volunteer, as his son was an assistant coach. Now he's the head coach. His son is still on the staff. Fort Lormie has had plenty of talent over the years. They found their way to get into Week 11. They did so last year for falling to full recovery. So he's going to bring in some new things, though, to Fort Lormie. And he certainly has got that, that old-school mentality. How they're going to trans transition into the Whit Parks era something I'm going to keep an eye on throughout the year. Yeah, yeah I think there's no doubt that the John Carpenter, Shawnee situation is the most intriguing because of a lot of the things Aaron already talked about. And, you know, I, I think what he's doing can work in high school. The question is, will it work at Shawnee? Yeah. Uh, he's not a, a guy, I think, that's going to come in and sugarcoat things. I think you can already tell he's been getting after him a little bit. He's going to ruffle some feathers. There might be some hurt feelings. Uh, some people might choose to leave or already have. Hey, we're moving on without you. This train's going ahead, and that's the way it's going to be. And I'm not so sure that's going to work at Shawnee, but we'll find out. Anna has a new coach as well, Nick Marino, which I'm intrigued by because he comes from Urbana, where Garen's to coach with Garen Stokes, and Garen Stokes went from Urbana to a Mac school, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're state champs, first time since 1989. I think that Nick Marino has goals to do something similar to that in Anna, and Anna's a, a great football program, consistent year in, year out, and, you know, five and were they 5-5 five and five last yes. year? So they're lo really looking to improve upon that, and I think Nick could be the guy to help them do that. He's only the second football coach in right. school history, right. too, yeah. is coach Nick. And Brian Ryak had, had the job, you know. Well, and an interesting dynamic, both at Shawnee and Anna. Brian Ryak still on the staff at yes. Anna. And Coach Owen still on the staff at Shawnee. So you've That's got the former point. head yeah. coach giving a little continuity, bringing, you know, bringing a little stability to those programs with the new coaches. Mm -hmm. So a new coach in the MAC at Anna. Speaking of coaches that are on staffs of their – um, successor Cam Staley, Staley yeah. at Allen East is now the defensive coordinator and how that deal went up. I talked to Cam last week July 27th Cam was not coaching football July 28th hey Cam you want to help us out a little bit July 30th he's a want to be the defensive coordinator <laughs> <laughs> well it must be nice for the guys to see some familiar faces around and, and know yeah. the entire yeah. coaching staff along with the well yeah coach. it it brings up a point though and it goes back to kind of what I was talking about with John Carpenter is the fit it's not so much yep. your X's and O's or even a lot of times the Jimmy's and Joe's. Does the head coach fit the program? Does he fit the school? Do they fit him? And if it doesn't, it's hard to fit square pegs and round holes. And uh, that's where I think uh, the challenge is with Sean E. And well, in a lot of places we've seen, you're right, it's not the Jimmy and Joe's, it's Jimmy and Joe's dads. Right. Yep. Exactly. And, and we're not spotlighting and singling out Coach Carpenter by any stretch of the imagination. It's just when you come in with the resume and the pedigree that he brings with him, you know, from his coaching, from his family lineage, right. you know, the Carpenter family is, you know, high up on the Ohio high school food chain as well in this state. You know, you're, you're going to have with that, it's going to come the bright lights, the spotlight, and you're going to be under more of a microscope than, say, a Chris Schmidt at New Bremen, who's got to rebuild a program that's only won two games in the last four, 10, 12 years, it seems like. Uh, yeah. Let's not forget, you're talking about a Shawnee athletic community that is hungry for some football success. Absolutely. Well, we'll see. Are they really? They want to do it their way, or they want to win? That's the question. Yep. Well, and you also have to wonder how much Shawnee's looking at the success Lima seniors had the last couple of years with some big name hires mm -hmm. for their football and basketball programs, and how much that Spartan Athletic Department has turned around under the, the guidance of John Zell with Mike Fell and Quincy Simpson. That's a good point. Yep. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Last year, we had three state champs in the area all coming from the MAC. No surprise there. My question to you is will we have multiple state champs coming out of the MAC again in 2015? I'm yes. going to say no. All right. We got an Todd, argument. Let's start with you. 
I'm just going to say yes because the odds favor it. I, I don't have any particular argument. They had three last year. Yeah. There's been many, many years they had two before we even went to seven divisions. Right. So I'm saying the odds favor them having multiple. But, you know, it, I Let, suppose let's there's not forget, some though, years Marion it's Marion more Local difficult moves from another. Division 7 up to Division 6. Right. I, I think the true. MAC is probably going to look pretty good for a Division 7 state champion, either Minster or Fort Recovery. A at some point, Marion Local and Coldwater are not going to win a state title. It's <laughs> going to happen some point. I'm picking 2015. Prove me wrong, Mac. So you're, you're going with the odds in the other th way of thinking. Exactly. One of these days, this has got to come to an end. <laughs> I'm going yes because Division 7 is geared to the MAC. Right. I've, and I think Minster or Fort Recovery could be that team. That's going to make a, for a wonderful yeah, regional you know, final if everything holds serve there. And the with Marion Local yeah, making the move from local, seven to six, right now. they've been to six. They, you know, only the they've six. They've been to five. They've been to five. Six isn't the smallest division in the state anymore. Does it matter? They're still good. We They're have, still really good. We could have the same state champions this year as last year, just in flip flop the divisions for six and seven. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Fort Recovery was one of the big surprise teams last year, along with Van Buren and some other teams who made some noise that maybe weren't on our radar this time exactly one year ago. So who are we looking at to put you on the spot that we could be talking about a couple months from now that we sh should have been talking about now but weren't? Could it be a team that we didn't expect to be on the radar a year ago? Sure. sure. Dolphins Jefferson would be one. Can they three-peat in the MAC or in the Northwest Conference, excuse me? And then I also think you got to look at Van Wert, guys, with 21 of their 22 starters from last year back. I think for Keith Recker and his squad, this it's not a make or break year, but it's turn the corner and have forward progress season. This has got this for them, I think, has to be that year too. Van Wert has got a lot of team speed. They've had a lot of success on the track the last couple of years, and a lot of those kids who run track are also on the football team. Van Wert is a, is a, a school that I don't know if they can be under the radar because so many people are talking about them being under the radar. They might be square on the radar at this point. I'm going to go with a Mac school that we didn't talk about, St. Henry. You got your leading rusher back for St. Henry. This was a team that was very close last year to a breakout type season. I think St. Henry could be that surprise team out of the MAC this year that maybe is up there for the second, third, maybe even comp competing for the number one spot in the MAC. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling there could be two teams in the Northwest Conference that are ready to step it up. I think Bluffton is one. Yes. A team that should have been a lot better than they were last year, had some tough losses yeah. in games they probably should have won. And I think Allen East might be poised to have a winning year Where did under you Coach from Abbey. Again? I'm from Allen East. I'm a little biased, but <laughs> uh, you know, just reading between the lines, the Cam Staley hire, yeah. some of the things Coach Abbey has said, I, I think Allen East really believes this is their best team they've had in a while. Time to have a, at least a winning record. So I'm going to keep an eye on Bluffton and Allen East. Allen East was 10 points combined in three losses last year that could have very easily made them 6-4. Sure. and four. Look, at, games. look at Bluffton, the, arguably the worst 3-7, and seven, or the best 3-7 yeah. and seven team that right. we had, not just in our area, but in the state. You look at Bluffton, that's a team that could have been 8-2 and two a year ago in a brand new system with a brand new head coach and Kyle Cuttenall. I love what Kyle's doing in Bluffton. I think arguably they could, all due respect to Jefferson, they're the, they're the champ until they're dethroned. And you gotta keep Spencerville and Crestview in the mix too. But my sleeper team is the Bluffton Pirates. Both Allen East and Bluffton, like you said, we're in a lot of close games. So and don't count out Elida in the WBL. So we'll see how that all plays out. Can't wait for football to get started. So let's finish up with some Major League Baseball. Last time the four of us were together, it was May. What's Major League Baseball? <laughs> <laughs> well, you and your, you and your first place the Mets. Tigers fans are <laughs> already no, bowing seriously, out. That's fine. I think we're looking at one of the most... Unexciting September's I totally in a long disagree. time. To could not, could the not Mets disagree. are running away with the East. There's going to be no. no I wasn't even going to mention the, the NL wild East. card races. Aren't that exciting right now either? I, I will disagree There's with you on the wild, wild card, card race. race. There's an the awesome wild card race in the in the, the National League. Yeah. Well, no, no, because no, it comes in the Pirates yeah. are so far ahead. Dude, those are set. The American League has yeah, a good. The, the second spot in the American League wild card is a little bit exciting right now. But outside of that, and that's a trinket anyways. It's not a real pennant race. It's a Bud Selig manufactured pennant. Race. But it still counts whether you're in or out. Well, the, you prob game. the problem with the hey, American League. You need to get League, playoff shirts made. Revenue. The wild card in the American League is a race to the bottom. All those teams are bad. It's just the opposite in the National League. The top three teams in the NL Central are so much better, they've yeah. already basically wrapped it up. They'll make, it's they'll just, make the playoffs, yeah. That's why I think that National League wild card race is ex 
has some excitement to it because the Pirates and Cubs still have to play each other like ten times. Yeah, in the but month they're of gonna, they're still. It's just going to be who's the first and who's the second wild that's, card. Hey, that's to not play excitement. At, to play you at home, know who's in to Wrigley Field hosting a, a play in, and you think those people are turn up at high noon? Heck, they're going to start up at 8.30 in the morning, <laughs> at least. Well, well as we learned earlier this week, Wrigleyville is a place you want to step lightly. Yes. The AL East will have a good finish, too, I think, at the top. And That's then, really about the only one. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then the loser, whoever doesn't win that division, probably won't make won't the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the big thing. Same with the same thing with the NL East, although my Mets are looking good. So we're happy happy about that. We'll check in as, it, as we get closer to October and see. Where Last time we at. talked, we were talking about six pitchers being in the rotation yeah. for the well, Mets. We might have, that might be coming back now, yeah. too, so we can save some minutes. But. All right, that's a story for another day. That's all the time we have for this edition of Press Row. Great to be back. We'll be back all throughout the school year. Talk football, soccer, volleyball, all the exciting fall sports coming your way. We'll see you next time on WOSN.